Eric Bailly is one of the most interesting footballers in the world today. The Man United centre-back is a unique character both on and off the pitch and there's various footage of him enjoying his life and having a good time with the likes of Paul Pogba and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. As the Ivorian international enjoys the fruits of his labour due to the years of hard work he had to put in, it is fair to say his path to becoming a footballer wasn't the easiest. I will explain his rags to riches and incredible story to becoming a professional footballer in this video. As always, if you do enjoy this video, please do give it a like, subscribe and turn on notification bells to help the channel out. Now let's get straight into it. Eric Bailly was born in Bingerville in Ivory Coast and came from a well-disciplined family and as a result was ingrained with a strong work ethic from a young age. He had to help his family with any extra income due to being relatively poor. Bailly explains, In Africa there are people that live in much more difficult situations but yes, as a child I started working. A young Bailly would work the phone cubicles in front of his house to make some small change when somebody would use it to make a call. He also sold second hand phones and cigarettes on the black market all alongside his various household chores such as cleaning around the house. Eric Bailly's father was a primary school teacher so you can imagine he was reluctant to allow his young son to drop out of school to pursue the near impossible dream of becoming a footballer. He was a strict and disciplined man and like all parents wanted his child to have a good education and a stable future. However with Bailly's brother Arthur being born, suddenly making it four siblings, his father's stance on education eased up a little bit. You see, to send your children to good schools and get an education costs money, and Bailly's father could see the desire of Bailly wanting to attempt to become a footballer. And at age 13, he gave him his blessings. With this sudden backing from his father, a young Bailly was suddenly full of confidence and knew he had to take advantage of this before his father changed his mind. Bailly's desire to help his family to a better life also spurred his determination to the next level. So Bai started training, spending hours and hours during the morning and day before returning home to eat and rest. He started playing in youth tournaments and started to get noticed due to helping his team reach finals. His father would never watch him play usually, but for this particular tournament, unknown to Bai at the time, he witnessed his son first hand. Later when Bai returned home, his father would still tease him, perhaps to keep him motivated and driven. Bai recalls the comment as his dad saying, People say you played well, but I don't know eh, the other players, they were terrible. His dad would never say he played well to keep Bailly focused and always demanding more and more. From playing in these local tournaments, he impressed enough to be invited to represent Ivory Coast in an international tournament with other African nations, against the likes of Nigeria, Mali, Cameroon and Burkina Faso. This was his opportunity as rumours were circulating that there were scouts from clubs such as Villarreal, Torino, Espanyol and other European clubs. After playing multiple matches over four days, Bai would return home, hopeful to hear back from his coach about whether he had impressed enough to gain a trial with a professional club. A few weeks went past without any news and as you can imagine, Bai was starting to lose hope. However, one eventful day would change his fortunes. He would return home and his father would ask to speak with him. Bailly's first reaction was that he had done something wrong and was going to get told off or to help with some cleaning again. But for once, his dad was smiling. Confused, Bailly asked what was up. And his father explained his coach had been around earlier for lunch and had explained that Bailly had impressed a scout from Espanyol, a Spanish club from Barcelona. They wanted to take him on a three month trial to monitor him more closely. Bai recalls receiving this news as one of the happiest days of his life. He said, I jumped out of the sofa and grabbed my mother. I hugged my father. Tears were streaming down my face. I said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Bai recalls he couldn't sleep due to the excitement. He had finally been given a legitimate route into professional football and to Europe. As his excitement grew and grew, he would suddenly be dealt a massive blow. You see, shortly after, a war broke out in Ivory Coast as two opposition leaders both claimed they had won the election to rule the country, meaning violence broke out between the two sides. This resulted in the airports being shut down, meaning Bailly was stuck and unable to leave the country. Suddenly, the dreams he had visualised since he was a little kid was hanging in the balance. However, his focus shifted quickly to survival mode. Not only was his future as a footballer in doubt, his whole life was in doubt due to the war. He recalls these moments as The crisis made it hard to buy food 
I had to go outside and carry drinking water back into the house in a bucket that I had placed on my head. My parents, my sister, my brothers, we all suffered. And yet, many people suffered far more than we did. So this helped put perspective in Bai's mind. The war would go on for several months and once it was over, Bai was delighted to hear that Espanol had not forgotten about him and was still interested. Bai and his family travelled to the airport and the realisation hit that he would be alone by himself in a foreign country. Bai and his family were very close and this was the first time he would be separated them for such a long time, but it was something he had to do to pursue his dreams. After arriving in Spain, Bai knew he had to adapt to the culture, climate and football as quickly as possible. He was determined to not waste this golden opportunity at changing not only his life, but his family's life as well. One month into the three-month trial, an Espanol had seen enough. He was told they wanted to sign him on a permanent contract. He had fulfilled his dreams of being a professional footballer. Not forgetting his family, he made a bank transfer to his mum and dad as soon as his first payment came through. From Espanol, he would then join fellow Spanish side Villarreal and then later the world-famous Manchester United, for whom he is still playing for. Of his amazing rise, Bailly explained it perfectly. He said, In about five years, I had gone from selling cigarettes on the streets of Abidjan to playing for the biggest club in the world. What does the future hold for Bailly? Who knows? But he can be sure the people of his hometown and Ivory Coast in general look at his success with proud eyes, as one of their own had made it to the world's greatest stage, the theatre of dreams. So yeah, that was the difficult path Eric Bailly had to take to make his football dreams come true. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please do give the video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a future video. Take care and I hope to see you again on Football Scope soon.